Robert, in your report today, you say that economic data remains unsettled. What do you mean by that? Yes, yeah, Susan, we're in a period of, of, of high uncertainty and a lot of volatility in the data. It's like a big bowling ball got dropped in a kiddie pool uh, last spring with the uh, COVID closures and then we reopened and we're still feeling the waves uh, bouncing off the sides of the kiddie pool. My concern is we're in a very transitional space right now in the economy where we've got the, the, the shutdown and the reopen behind us. But as we look forward, we're gonna have some ongoing issues. Demand destruction has piled up for a number of companies. We're gonna see reorganizations, too much capacity out there. And then the, the most recent thing I am concerned about is the failure of Congress to pass uh, a fiscal uh, package uh, heading into the fall election. It looks like the odds of getting more help uh, from Congress is rapidly diminishing uh, this fall. And so I, I think there are some reasonable concerns to be, to be aware of as we transition from the third quarter rebound into the fourth quarter, which may end up looking fairly flat. Robert, let's talk about some of the data out this week, specifically the producer price index and consumer price index. Both of those are up. So what does that mean for the prices that we pay buying food and other types of goods? Well, we're seeing a lot of fluctuation right now in prices, and, and that's part of this idiosyncratic story that for the, for the overall economy. So it depends on where you are in the country. It depends on what business you're in. Uh, overall price levels have come up in, in August, both the consumer price index and the producer price index. Uh, energy prices came up in midsummer. They're now pulling back. But within that, within that group of everything other than energy, prices are going in different directions. Obviously, airline tickets, uh, the price of uh, the cost of entertainment facilities have come down. Used car prices have, ac have actually gone, uh, have surged. And, and so there's just a lot, again, a lot of churn going on in the data. My expectation is through this fall, we're going to be in a period of settling after the, uh, after the reopen. And it's gonna be a very critical time for the US economy to see how we emerge from this period of settling after so many big events that we've been through in recent months. Robert, how about the JOLTS report? We saw a decline in July after we had some spikes earlier in the spring. Yes, that's the same story there, Susan, where, where job openings surge with, with the rehiring back, they're coming down now. Separation rates surged with the, with the closures last spring, and then they reverse, and now they're leveling out again. And, and I'll repeat myself here, we're just in this real soup of data because of all the tremendous uh, uh, impacts of closures and reopening that we have, we've endured here for the last, say, six months now. Robert, Fed meeting coming up this week. What are your expectations? I, I think the Fed is gonna be as cautious as, as, as everyone else right now. I don't think they're gonna change the Fed funds rate. We may see some tweaks to forward guidance talking about how long they may keep the Fed funds rate near zero based on their policy review, which uh, uh, Fed Chair uh, Jay Powell was talking about at the end of August at their Jackson Hole Symposium. So we're gonna see some new language from the Fed, but we're not gonna see new interest rate policy from the Fed next week.